Final Hour Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Brian Hazeldog, Jeff O'Neill, Jason Strudwick. We've got a big hour. Ryan Rashog will join us later in the hour. Oilers coming off a win in Boston last night in overtime. McDavid to dry settle there in Columbus tomorrow. Rashog is down there, I believe, preparing for Trade Center, and the Oilers made a deal today, picking up Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick for a first rounder and a fifth rounder. So they're in the act today. Ottawa's making moves. Tarasenko's on his way to Florida. You got Buffalo and Colorado making a deal. Colorado making multiple deals. They picked up Sean Walker as well from Philly. So a lot going on here. So Rashog later in the hour. Darren Dreger will join us here in a few moments. And we got Leaf Sabres tonight. And Samsonov will go tonight. Joseph Wall will go tomorrow. And, you know, we were talking earlier about McDavid and him chasing 100. The last handful of games you know mcdavid or matthews chasing 70 is slowed down because i think he's only got a goal in his last five games i believe it is um you know he's still leading the league by a substantial margin he's he's going to get to 60 but i i'm curious if tonight you know he rips home two or three i wouldn't be shocked you know i wouldn't be shocked like when he breaks loose he's gonna break <laughs> loose he always does that. As soon as you think he's slowing down a little bit, it comes up with a hat trick or back-to-back hat tricks, and you're like, well, numbers are back, back on up. Pace. Pro- yeah, yep. projections are back up. <laughs> That's yep. what we do in Toronto, Stratty. We talk about the goals, just goals. Yeah. No, I love it. I mean, uh, it's – and listen, I, I like Austin Matthews a lot. And what blows me away is – and these are all great goal scorers – they just they don't need to be open for long, and they find the quiet area to be open and get that puck in his back of the net before we even know it. So mm. I love watching him play. I think he's he's so talented, and he's and he's added a lot of other features to his game. He's he's a elite player. Yeah, I mean he and uh, my boy Mitch Marner, as you know, the face of the 2015 <laughs> NHL draft, Mitch Marner. Um, you know the two of them they they've connected really since they both stepped into the league. And Matthews is sitting on 53 goals. Leafs have what 20 games left to play. Yeah, he's like he's got to get going if he wants to get seventy back in. But I, I think his his personal record is sixty. I think at a minimum you want to get to sixty one. You want to rewrite your own record book. Sure. And I think hitting sixty twice in your career, it's something Ovechkin never did, Stamkos never did, would be significant. But I, I think again, if we're starting to move the goalposts here a little bit from seventy or seventy three, seventy four. Ov like Ovechkin's best season was 0809, I believe it was. He had 65. 65. Yeah, that's the number you want. You want you want to get to 66, yeah, so that you can you're say the current guy that yes, has the yeah. most. Yeah, exactly. And even McDavid last year at 64, I believe, right? 63 or right. 64. Like you, you, you've gone this far. You, you've built it up this high. You, you can't end on 58 now. You know, like you, you got to <laughs> yeah. get, you got to get up over 60, and you got to try to push the the bar even higher. Let, let me ask you guys, what's more impressive? Let's say he gets 70 goals or Conor McDavid gets 100 assists. Well, based on the history of the league, the 100 assists, because it's been, mm-hmm. there's only three guys that have ever done it. You know, I think there's like 16 guys that have scored, 14 guys that have scored 70, something like that. Or no, it's less than that. There's there's like eight players that have done it, but it's happened like 16 times mm-hmm. in NHL point, history. But you have to factor in the quality of goaltending, and it's no disrespect to anybody that ripped home a bunch of goals back in the day. But if you look at the goaltending position and the way that goaltending has evolved, like it's, I don't know, it's a lot different. Yeah. It's a lot different. The sticks different. are better. The sticks are better. It's easier to shoot, I think. Yeah, that's the the counter, I guess, is, you know, it's all, I, I don't know. There's also a difference between a, a goal is a primary point where McDavid's got a ton of primary assists, but he also sneaks in a, oh, I tapped that on a second assist and all of a sudden the, the numbers are a little bit blown. <laughs> Not Everyone a lot, does man. It. Yeah, Everyone, does still it. Though. Everyone does it. They still count, but strutty. <laughs> You got like, come let's be on. honest. A second assist come, is nowhere near as impressive on. as a goal. So, I mean, come you're on. You're going to say someone gets. So are you saying that about Wayne Gretzky? He had over yes. 100 assists. Yes. Well, a couple of those were second assists. <laughs> they're not, What'd you, you say? It has to be considered. I mean, it's. it's no. uh, listen, they still they're on the game sheet, but it's a secondary assist. Come on, guy can tap it into the neutral zone. The other guy does all the work, and he's still on the game sheet. It still counts. It's not like you're counting assists in warm up, man. These are actual assists, and I, I understand the idea of first and second assists, but sometimes the second assist, like I, I always, I don't like this conversation a lot because a demon makes an incredible breakout, <laughs> yeah, exactly. hits the center, and he's flying up the ice. He dishes to the winger who shoots and scores. Who set the play up? The okay. demon did it. What about so, the demon that threw it high and hard off the boards and it hit the guy in yeah. the face and he snapped out of it and still made an unreal play, and that guy actually got a second assist himself. 
I hear I you. Once, There's context to it, but I I once got an assist on a penalty kill. I shot it off the glass, hit the linesman in the head, ricocheted <laughs> to our other forward. He passed it, and that guy scored. I celebrated like that was game seven winner. Atta I was boy. so happy. I skated by a linesman. I said, thank you. And yeah. He's just laughing, right? It's he was how, fine. I didn't have many. a hard shot. There you go. It's not how, it's how many. Here's Darren Dreger, TSN Hockey Insider. How's your day going today? Yeah, it's been busy. So as you guys are talking... I'm looking at O-Dog, who has 259 assists career. Okay. Yeah. Do we, have we broken down how many of those were primary or secondary assists? And does it matter? I don't think with that total, Dregs, just like Struddy's totals, they just don't matter to anyone. No, at all. it matters at to me. <laughs> it matters to me, no. exactly. My, <laughs> my one assist in the O was a primary assist, and it was a, <laughs> it was a sauce right through the middle. It was beautiful, and a 7 nothing win. <laughs> yeah, that's a true story. Um, anyway, it's good to have you, as always. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of activity today. Like, is there any rhyme or reason as to why all these deals broke loose today within like an hour of each other? It felt that way, Anyway, I'm tired of it. I've had enough. Mm -hmm. I'm waving a white flag, and I know you don't want to hear this, Brian, and James Duffy doesn't want to hear it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, number of games on the schedule tonight, maybe that has some influence. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, teams are looking at the midweek break and going, all right, well, we don't want to get caught up in Thursday's mayhem, and then Friday is obviously the deadline. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's always a bit of a, a sketchy, you know, s- stretch of games for any teams that are creeping up to the trade deadline. And this year is a bit unique because, you know, there are good players in play that have been traded already. But I wouldn't say like over the top players in play where the market has been like captivated by one piece. So maybe that kind of kind of lends itself to everything that's going on here as well. But it's been a weird couple of days for sure. Yeah, it has. And again, moves that happened today. The Oilers got in on the act, uh, acquiring Adam Henrique, Sam Carrick from Anaheim. They gave up a first and a conditional fifth. Ottawa trading Tarasenko to Florida for a third yeah. rounder in 25 and a fourth round pick, a conditional pick in 24. Sean Walker on yeah. his way to from Philly to Colorado. Bowen Byram. Goes to Buffalo for yeah. Casey Middlestat. Alex Wenberg on his way to New York. Like these are good players. Yeah. You know this. This good is good players. Yeah, and uh, I guess I guess we'll begin in Edmonton. You know, them picking up Henrique. Um, is is that it? What's your read on what else could be possibly in store for the Oilers between now and three p.m. on Friday? Well, I mean, they, they don't have a whole lot of cap space, right? Um, you know, Edmonton was in on just about everything. Like they were. They were poking around on Sean Walker, but I think that's just Ken Holland and and the Edmonton Oilers doing their due diligence. Uh, you know, keep an eye on Toe Foley, keep an eye on on uh, uh, Tarasenko. I mean, go down the list of the forwards that are in play. But Henrique was always the primary target of Holland and the Oilers. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how things unfold from there. What I'm more interested in is, okay, what happens next? So you've got, you know, the Vegas Golden Knights who, you know, acquired Anthony Manta from the Washington Capitals. Well, they're not done yet. And then we reported on insider trading, which was right at the time and still may be accurate moving forward, that the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Boston Bruins, and the Vancouver Canucks potentially were involved in a three-way trade on, on Jake Gensel ending up in Vancouver. I wonder if Kyle Dubas and the Pittsburgh Penguins weren't trying to smoke out a market a little bit last night. Not to say that they didn't have conversations. Of course they did. But the follow-up today is that mm, maybe the teams that we're targeting as you know, primary spots for Jake Gensel are being targeted by the Pittsburgh Penguins because, you know, Penguin sources last night said that they thought that uh, Gensel would be traded by now, and that hasn't happened. So always lots of things going on around this time of year. Every good hockey person knows that D-men are the heartbeat of any team. 
Uh, we saw a few D men move today. You know, outside yeah. of kind of Lars and some of those other guys who yeah. are the one, and, and obviously Hannafin. But are there some yeah. others that we maybe haven't heard of that would maybe be middle to 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 you know six you know, fifth six defensemen that might be uh, you know pushed out into the market now? The yeah, you know, of a hockey yeah, it's pretty. It's it, it, it's it's a good question, and yeah, there are names that are out there for sure. You know, now that Ottawa made its move in, in sending Tarasenko to Florida, uh, you know, you're looking at Bradstrom again. I think that there's been some activity around him. Um, here's a weird one for you, or not. I mean, you guys are better in tune with, you know, the quality of defense. And Cope Savage from Montreal, I think, is drawing a bit of a crowd. Um, whether or not the Montreal Canadiens want to trade him or not, I mean, they don't seem to have a spot for them, but I guess that can change if they make other trades. So, yeah, that defense market is is intriguing. It always starts with the top of the class, and that's Noah Hannafin. And I know Ottawa, as an example, is waiting on what happens with Noah Hannafin in Calgary because that will influence what they do with uh, Jake Chickering, if they do anything. Like, the action around Chickering this week has been good, but it, it does feel like you know, he's a bit of a placeholder. If Hannafin goes, maybe somebody else comes in and takes a run at the Ottawa Senators. Dregs, why do I see, we talked about it earlier, Pareko trending all the time. Is that just Leaf fans that want Pareko, or is he actually yeah. in play, or what do you think happens there? Or is that just literally Twitter being Twitter? I think it's it's Twitter being Twitter Um And again, we always, you know, just couch these things with, Anything can happen between now and the deadline, which isn't that far away. I'm trying to think who told me this. It could be in our internal thread, so I apologize if I'm outing one of our internal sources. But I don't believe that the agent for Pareko has been asked to waive his no-trade clause. Um, So that seems like a bit of a stretch. But anything around the the St. Louis Blues right now is also, to me, you know, a bit of a plan B option. I keep hearing, and I've been part of it, about the idea of, of Pavel Butchnevich being traded. And the agent this morning said, don't think so. And somebody close to the, uh, the St. Louis Blues said, unlikely. So that's either Doug Armstrong being Wiley as an old veteran GM with both those guys and keeping, again, the cards close to the vest, or it's not going to happen. But that's the time of year that we're at right now. With Darren Dreger, TSN Hockey Insider, um, that's, I mean, it's not a surprise. Leaf fans are constantly waiting for something. And, you know, the team acquired Ilya Labushkin. And yeah. in, in order to do that, you know, they got a third party involved. They reduced his cap hit. They yeah. still have money to play with, with, which has led me to believe it's inevitable they're going to make another move. It's just a matter of what it is. Yet, you know, it, it sounds like they don't want to give up a, their first round pick. You know, no. don't want to go down the Easton Cowan, Fraser Minton Road. They're not going to trade yeah. Nyes. Why would they possibly do that? Robertson seems like a very likely candidate to be moved between now and Friday. Like, where are you at with the dra- with with the Leafs situation right now, Dregs? Yeah, I'm, I, like all of that, Brian makes a ton of sense. Um, so I don't want to close the door on any of those possibilities. And when you have a player like Nick Robertson, who's, you know, played pretty well, I would say that his play has dipped off of late, but he's, you know, he's still considered a commodity across the NHL. Uh, I have no reason to believe that he's part of something right now. Um, but I do know that management of the Toronto Malib- uh, Maple Leafs continues to poke around. They're looking for a forward, a grittier guy. If there's a center available, and we're talking bottom six here. We're not to, obviously you know, we're not talking about top six. I think Brad Trotting would be in the market for that. Um, depth on defense, of course. Every team is looking at that. But you know, as of checking in not that long ago, I didn't get the sense that they were active on anything, which is saying a lot considering everything that went on today. So. You know, you can't close the door. Uh, True Living is going to stay in the mix, but I don't think that they have anything that's front burner that really moves the needle a whole lot. Where are we at with action for goaltenders? Is there a goaltender market for those that want to sell or those that want to buy? 
Hmm. Is Noodle still available? Yeah, he could be. He's suspended, <laughs> yeah, though. Suspended. He's technically yeah. suspended. That's right. That's right. Uh, I mean, you know, again, we, we, we look, and I, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful here. You, you look at the bottom of the heap, and, you know, you come up with names like Kakinen from San Jose or Jake Allen. And Jake Allen, for me, would be a terrific tandem for somebody. Doesn't seem like that market is moving. And maybe it does move a whole lot uh, unless Tom Fitzgerald, New Jersey Devils, find a way to, to pry Mar- uh, uh, Jacob Markstrom from the Calgary Flames. Beyond that, guys, I mean, we're looking at just about everything. And I've heard it all. Like, I've, I've heard teams that shouldn't be necessarily in the market for uh, a goalie upgrade or at least insurance that seem to be. But then you cross-reference and – no, there's nothing going on there. So, I don't know. The first goalie move, let's hope it kind of sparks the market. Yeah, no kidding. Exactly. Well, listen, uh, there was there were sparks today. There was there was a number of deals that were in place. And, you know, we, we've been saying, like, yes, a lot of good players got traded today. But Gensel, Hannafin, Markstrom, like those three are the, the three players that hold the most impact, I, I would say, at this point of the players that we believe are going to be dealt or could be dealt, yeah. Hannafin and Gensel in particular. And, you know, CJ had that report yesterday that if Gensel ends up in Vancouver, and I know you discussed this where Pittsburgh's at and are they sending smoke screens out, but the idea that Lindholm, like, is not a fit in Vancouver and they could flip yeah. him, like, that's a wild transaction. Is that fact, though, Dregs? Like, are they unhappy yeah. with what he's done there, to, to your knowledge or anyone's? Well, unhappy might be a stretch, but, oh, you know Jimmy better than any of us here, right? Like, he does not mess around, especially with a deadline looming, which is where we're at with Friday around the corner. Um, They paid a premium to get, you know, Lindholm from the Calgary Flames. Uh, Are they disappointed? Yeah, probably, and he's probably disappointed in himself. Like, Rick Talk has tried to find a fit, and it hasn't worked, so... Um, I, I think that, that the Vancouver Canucks are going as all in as they can get. And would they love to have Jake Gensel enter the equation? Of course they would. I wonder if Pittsburgh overplayed its hand a little bit yesterday, because if you look at that three way scenario, which would have included Pittsburgh, Boston and Vancouver, how do you make that work? Well, Lindholm of course goes to Boston. Gensel ends up in uh, Vancouver, and who do the Penguins get? You know, there's lots of speculation. Is it uh, Jake DeBrusque? Is it Pod Colvin? Is it, it uh, uh, Hoglander? Is it a first? I mean, all of the above. Well, if, if all that was going to happen, it probably would have happened by now. But I have definitely heard the speculation of Lindholm to Boston, and earlier today, I heard Lindholm to the New York Rangers. And that seems probably a bit of a stretch. You know, they got Wenberg. So who knows? We're in the crazy time of year now. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. We're uh, inside 48 hours to trade deadline. Thank you for doing this, Dregs. We'll see you Friday morning. Okay, boys. Thank you. Darren Dreger, our TSN Hockey Insider. All right, there you go. Good recap. We'll see. There's a lot of different news out there, a lot of rumors out there. Um, you know, some some players, obviously a lot of players still available, and who knows what else comes available between now and 3 p.m. on Friday. Uh, Ryan Rashad coming up. Oh, you're going to take over here. Hayes versus Struddy, Edmonton versus Toronto. We got a couple of things you want to throw at us. Are you prepared to come out of the break as the host here? Like, is that what we're oh, talking about? This absolutely. Is like a dear I've been waiting for this as soon as I got into radio and television. Mm-hmm. This is the moment I've been <laughs> waiting for. All right, let's do it. You're going you're gonna to take over the whole operation and pit the two of us against each other. And Shogger coming up as well. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. Here it is, the segment you've been waiting for your whole life. <laughs> Whether you're on the broadcast team or listening, this is what it's all about. It should have been called horny or desperate or both. <laughs> but diagram. maybe that's something for another day. <laughs> All right. I would ask one thing. Here's what we're going to do. Just some questions involving Leafs, Oilers. Think about your credibility. Don't just side with your hometown, whatever. You guys are credible analysts. <laughs> what credible credibility? Journalists. Yeah, exactly. You're pitting strutty. And, and what I want Doogie to do other. is when this is over, when this is over, mm-hmm. a quick poll, and it only runs till the end of the show, 
Who won Hayes versus Struddy? All right. Yes. Here it yes. is, question number one. Struddy, you get to go first because you're a guest. Who's had the better overall season and performance and performance? Connor McDavid or Austin Matthews? The goal scoring is being impressive. I'll go Austin Matthews. Wow. Wow. Struddy, you just <laughs> earned a lot of credit. Struddy, now, now you've thrown me off because it's like, do I have to reverse this? Dude, you got to be your own man. You don't yeah, worry don't. about that. I'm going to be my man. own man. Tim, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Matthews at 53 goals. I'm going to say Matthews scoring 53 at this point and lapping the field has been outrageous. I think his two way game has been phenomenal. I think. I think the Oilers are a better team, like a better built team. So McDavid's been unbelievable. Like he's unbelievable. The guys, he's going to finish with like 110 assists. We talked about it earlier. Um, but I, I think the Leafs need Matthews to, to, to perform more than the Oilers need McDavid. And I know that sounds crazy considering the way it started. They were so bad early. They got Jay Woodcroft fired. McDavid played a role in that. He wasn't playing well enough, but I think, when you look at the way the two teams are built, Edmonton, I think, top to bottom is a little bit better, a little bit more sound than the Leafs. Value goes to the goal scorer. I'll go Matthews. Austin Matthews. All right, that's a wash. I didn't see that one coming, but all right. Continue. <laughs> no bias whatsoever, None. but I think KZB answered the question better. I'm just saying. Well, I just I, thought, that's just my thoughts. All right. uh, so, so, not, I, hold on. I, next why question. Did, how long can I answer? Pardon me. No, okay, next question. Okay, I'll answer it longer than that. I didn't okay. know we could do that. You guys okay. don't tell me the nah, rules. It's, it, doesn't, it, was, it was quality. It's not we're quality. broadcasting here. All right. Come on. All right. Which you goaltender would you trust more between the pipes heading into the playoffs? Stuart Skinner or Joseph Wall? Hazy B. Ooh, this is a tough one because I think the Achilles heel of both teams is this position potentially. But I, I'm going to say Skinner. Uh, his, the start of the year, he was he was horrendous. He was awful. I think he was he played a big role with Jack Campbell and others as to why Woodcroft and company had to leave. But since then, he's legitimately been one of the best six or seven goalies in the league. And when they had that run, the team played really well. Clearly, defensively, very sound. He was phenomenal. Like he, he Skinner was really good. He doesn't have a lot more playoff experience than Wall. Wall's only got a couple of games in that Florida series, but he does have more. So he's more of a seasoned vet in the playoffs. Stuart Skinner is my answer. Yeah, Stuart Skinner. He got a lot of opportunity to play in the playoffs last year. Knows what it's like. Understands the rigors of playing. You know, you know, every other night, the challenges, the pressure of playing at home, the excitement, mm -hmm. and understand how to measure uh, and and sorry to uh, manage your uh, body energy. So I think that he's really dialed in right now. I think he understands all those things, and he's grown from that experience. And that, for me, puts some head and shoulders above water. How about this? Kumbaya, Again, no, but, uh, I know, but I only have to. We have, to dig, we have to dig into the details. Again, Hazy B, I thought, had better kind of. Okay, but got, we're giving the same. But you're right. I think what? mine, a little Here's bit more detail. It, it was just. Kumbaya, though. Go it was ahead. just better. It was just better. Okay. Which duo will remain with the team longer? McDavid Dreisaitl or Matthews Marner? Whew, who's going first? Jason Strudwick. Strudy. Well, first off, it, no, you, you, get, you have uh -oh. to say your answer uh -oh. first. <laughs> well, no, why don't you go with the two best players of the Leafs? Why don't we go Nylander and Matthews? Dude, you can't start doing this stuff. This is the, It's like the quiz. You can't change you can't everything. challenge the whole okay, The question oh, is, which duel okay. will remain in the team longer, McDavid, <laughs> Dreisaitl, or Matthews, Marner? I will go Dreisaitl, McDavid. I believe that these two guys really enjoy playing with each other. They, have, they want to build a legacy uh, in Edmonton, and that would have to include a Stanley Cup to do that. Um, it'd be a very, it'd be trying. I think it'd be stressful for Oilers fans and the players, and obviously the management, to get it done. But I do believe that both players will sign long term with the Oilers. Ooh, this is a tough one because the the next contract up is Marner. Uh, but actually, I guess it coincides with Drysaddle. I think Drysaddle and Marner are up the same year, right? I, I believe after next year they're both right. up. Right. So. You know, the question is, who's going to re-sign this year? I'm going to say Matthews and Marner, be or because Matthews, we know, is here for another four years. He's not going anywhere. McDavid's only got two years left. Drysaddle's only got a year. There's more of a likelihood, based on the contract negotiations, that one of those two guys in Edmonton is going to say, check, please. There's a chance that happens with Marner. There's a chance Marner decides he's not comfortable here anymore, doesn't want to be here. Or, conversely, because they've committed to Matthews, they've committed to Nylander, if one of the core players has to go... Based on simply the math, it would turn out to be Marner in the end. 
But I, I think with Matthews signed long term, longer than the other two guys in Edmonton, Marner being a local guy, I think he really wants to stay. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to say Matthews and Marner. <laughs> I've Matthews got a score at three nothing. I'm just. I don't what? know what the fans. I'm just saying. I don't you're know what biased. the fans said. So? You're biased. All right. What we else have got? one last one. Okay. Which contract will be better in the long run? Zach Hyman, William Nylander, or Austin Matthews? Which contract will be better in the long run? Hazy B, you can go Sorry, first. repeat the players again. Now I know how mad you must get at me when I'm just I wasn't. I wasn't losing. listening. I wasn't listening. I was Because Drager just sent a tweet out. I was reading the tweet. Go ahead, please. Yeah, exactly. Now, now you know what it's like when I know, but you see how guy. I support you, and I just say, "Hey, I'll read it again." <laughs> no, you did Which didn't. contract? Okay, go ahead. Which contract will be better in the long run? Austin Matthews, William Nylander, or Zach Hyman? Whew. I think it's uh, based on production. I think it's Hyman because he's into it, right? Like Hyman's. This is his third year. But we're not talking about this individual season. You're focused on recency bias here. You have to think about the long right. run, right? Like when, so, when he's what you're asking is when it's done, we'll look back. If if then it's Matthews. Because Matthews is a four-year deal. For the next four years after this, he's going to be one of the five or ten best players in the league. I have no doubt about that. Yes, it's a big number. It's the biggest number in the league. Now, Dreisaitl will blow past that. McDavid will undoubtedly blow past that. But it's a four-year deal. If it was an eight-year deal, I might say maybe he gets hurt or he's older and you know wheels fall off. Wheels aren't falling off on a four-year deal for Matthews at 13.25. It's Austin Matthews. Case dismissed. No questions asked. Go ahead, Struddy. Get your pens out. Put in a, cho- a stroke beside my name. This is what it is. Zach Hyman. When Ooh. you're looking at contract value, you're looking at who outperforms their contract. Matthew's not outperforming his deal. Nylander will not do that either. Hyman has done nothing but outperform his contract since arriving here in Empton. Now, maybe the last year or two, he might just be average or just live to that $5.5 million. But he will outperform his contract number yearly for a number of years. And therefore, easy answer, Zach Hyman. Thank you. Okay. Interesting. Not a kumbaya anymore. Not a kumbaya. <laughs> we've got, you've Doogie, got friction. We're, we've only got until 7 o'clock. Doogie, please put out the poll. Doogie. Who won Hayes versus Struddy? And there's only two <laughs> options, Hayes or Struddy. And by 7 o'clock, we declare a winner, and Bob's your uncle. All right. I love it. Well played, Struddy. I, I thought you know, I, can, I can be a big man here. It was a battle. pillow fight to start, I'll admit. It wasn't it was great. a pillow fight. It wasn't great. But listen, it's not a two-way street. People in Toronto, we love you in Edmonton. We love you. We embrace Edmonton. That's exactly right we, we don't know we're not like you guys are we petty. don't hate you we have no hate in our hearts. <laughs> none none we are caring and we're loving and we 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 love when we see you featured on hockey night or on yes. you know the beginning of the ctv yes. news and all that kind of stuff yeah. it's very important when we talk about different you know businesses that are established in edmonton we really are supportive of that should say toronto ontario yes. all love <laughs> no hate exactly <laughs> we're sadly it's not a two-way street but that's fine do we have Ryan Rashog on the line? All right, so now we got a duo going because we got the podcast cooking, sure. right, Struddy? Which you've been you want you got to plug your podcast, man. I know we plug you every time we come on, but uh, the Got Your Back podcast, you guys are rocking out there, and uh, your co-host here, he also happens to be the Edmonton Bureau reporter, which is a very dignified title. <laughs> Here's our main man, Ryan Rashog. Shogger, how you doing, buddy? That game, that game was a disaster. You guys, you need to know this about what? Struds. You need to clearly set out the rules before right. you throw him into a competitive endeavor. He got absolutely... St- His first answer was two words. And, Hazy, you went on for like 90 seconds. I know. I know. He You're right. He had no idea what he was well, I don't know the against, rules. And that was, a, that was a bloodletting early on. Well, set up the knitting fail. Under, he's knitting below his screen. He's <laughs> knitting. That's just distracted. He's distracted. <laughs> Well, oh my goodness! Here's here's something that was established, Doogie. I'm going to out you here, Struddy. I'm going to out Doogie as well because we have a we have a group chat on the show, right? Like when we're not all in the same same room together, we have a chat where when we're doing interviews, we put a thumbs up emoji to say like it's I, I got something here, I'm coming. And Struddy told Doogie he's never used an emoji ever in his life, and I think Are that's you an- serious. Oh, that's an accurate assessment. Did you I see what you. he used two different emojis the last time we had someone on? We had Dregs on. He used a, 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 a palm 
and then a clap. This guy's just any emoji he can find he's putting into the group chat. So this is what you have to deal with, Ryan? Like, how do you guys get through yeah. your show? No, nah, it's, yeah, there, it, there's a lot of quirks. There's a lot of quirks, <laughs> a lot of things we got to work through. We, we do this segment at the end of the night. It's called Gem of the Night, where we basically can pick anything from the entire day. Mm -hmm. Anything that happened in the world, in the sports world, on the show, something like that. Struddy gets to pick it. Eight out of ten times, you guys, he calls his own number and picks something he <laughs> said. <laughs> guys, quality, quality. You want quality, quality, so I give you quality. That's, that's what I'm here for. That's <laughs> accurate, man. I like well, it. By the way, Struddy, don't you love the way these guys are like, oh, we're all love here in Toronto. Oh, all yeah, love. We love know, and guys. yet they speak to us as though we are from, like, Pluto. <laughs> how right. do you do it with the weather out there? And how do you go? Wow. Dude, do you no, have that's how, that's and, where people from the, that's for people people from florida say we have a true respect for the western canadians in this country <laughs> mm -hmm. and i stand by that how many times have you complained about the weather in edmonton oh, since you had yeah. the on today yeah. dude well i only said i only said one thing reesh when I was out there for the World Juniors and I walked across the street with my wife, she looked at me and said, your snot in your nose and your eyebrows are frozen right to your face. And I said, I've only been outside for 30 seconds. She said, we need to go home or we're going to die out here. It was that bad. Anyway, Hazy, take over. Let's get to the good stuff. All right, stuff. well, let's get to the good stuff here because the, uh, the Oilers made an acquisition today, multiple, I guess, one trade with multiple players. They bring in Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick. Uh, in exchange for a first round pick and a fifth, which is conditional, what you know, you're you're around the team all the time. What what do you make of this move, and what does it tell you about how they feel about this group, and and maybe any possible other moves that could come between now and the deadline? Yeah, what I would say about this guys is that it's not flashy, but it could be pretty highly functional. Like I think that the Oilers had an appetite to go and find a top six right winger. I think they wanted to but it was going to have to be somebody that fit perfectly alongside either McDavid or Dreisaitl in that number two spot. And in the absence of being able to find that player, I think they deferred to a center instead, right? There's, there was absolutely no point in going out and getting another third line right winger or third line left winger or something like that. So I think they targeted one of those, you know, one of those right wingers that potentially could have been there, but that deal's not there. And so they grab a versatile center, I think they're more experienced. I think they're better down the middle. I think they give themselves a chance to defend better and kill penalties better when it matters the most. I think they get a little bit of little sandpaper and some size with Carrick. They're deeper. They're a deeper, better team. And I think the fact that they were able to do it at the numbers they were, you had a third and a fourth line center, and you're, I think they were under $2 million bucks in added cap space, guys. It cost them a first-round pick. But it makes sense to me why they did what they did here, given they couldn't find that true number two right winger. Rish, from what happened in the playoffs, and I, you, you want to be optimistic and have a different or a new belief in Skinner, but he, I think he was pulled a lot, wasn't he, last year in the playoffs? At least three or four times. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, so and, and it's in, in saying that, did they still did, or do they still feel comfortable with Pickard if, if he has to come in and mop up or kind of – come in for a bit of a series. You think they're comfortable with that? I mean, I would assume they are, judging by... I'm going to take it a step further, O. I think they're comfortable with Campbell. Jack Campbell was excellent in relief of Stuart Skinner in the playoffs last year. I was asking around about Jack Campbell this week. My sense is the Oilers would be perfectly comfortable with having Jack Campbell back up with the big club. Based on the way he's played down there, based on his attitude, frame of mind, all those things, but Calvin Pickard's done really well. So they don't need to make that change right now. But the greater point here on the goaltending, guys, is Stuart Skinner. And it's a fair question. He's going to answer those questions for the rest of the season. He's going to answer them as the playoffs start. I think sometimes what teams maybe don't give guys an opportunity to do is to bounce back and learn from their experiences and their mistakes. And I think Stuart Skinner is at a point in his career, guys, and Struds, you would know this, you know him. Uh, I think he's ready to learn from what happened last year. I think he's a smart guy. I think he looks in the mirror. I think he's probably not super pumped about the way that it went. And what's the point of riding a young guy through the playoffs if by the time he's an experienced guy, you're not willing to ride him anymore? Why not let him benefit from his experiences and, and let it ride? And that's what they've decided they're going to do here. When you look at the, 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 
the, the, the team now as a group. Where do they go from here? They've, they've bulked up their middle six a little bit. Where, where do you think they, they, they look now, Shogger? Yeah, Ken Holland said today, I mean, a depth defenseman, right? There was a lot of talk about upgrading Cody CC. Lots of discussion around town about, you know, Tanev in, CC out. I never really believed that was a significant possibility. I think Ken Holland's got an eye on next season, too, guys. And, you know, if you trade Cody CC, who's got a deal for next year, and you bring Tanev in, who you got playing the right side for you next year? Now you're going out into free agency to try and find a top four right shot defenseman. Good luck with that. I think they like the top six. I think they do. And so I, I think they're going to look to add a number seven, maybe put someone ahead of Philip Broberg on the depth chart, look for it to be a veteran guy, right shots, maybe somebody that can play either side that has some experience, bigger body, you know, Joel Edmondson, you know, Magna's name has been out there quite a bit. So it's a depth defenseman to me. Um, maybe they'll nibble around on some bigger stuff, but I think the big one's done here. And Oiler fans aren't going to love that, guys, because – Names like Bushnevich and Gensel and, you know, uh, Jenner. Those are names that have all been making the rounds in Edmonton. And so you get the sense that they were wanting a bigger splash. That's why I said this is kind of understated, but I think it could be pretty effective. Reese, that game last night, do you think they win that game last year? Yeah, I do. Oh, late in the season. That, that was a hell of a good team late last season. And they knew how to lock it down. They knew how to play in tight games. I think people kind of... You know, the Oilers have had some stretches where they played real good D this year, and some people act like it's the first time they've ever done it. Down the stretch, they were one of the better defensive teams in the game. Their last six, seven games of the year, they, they gave up almost nothing. And then they got to the playoffs and forgot how to do that. So it didn't, it didn't follow through in the playoffs. But, yeah, I do. The Oilers know how to be a good regular season team. They know how to play in these games. Uh, they didn't discover something this year, guys. They got back to something that they discovered last year. So, yeah, they've learned these lessons, and now they're, they're kind of hearkening back on those lessons, and uh, the quality of play is real strong, man. Like it's, it's been an unreal run under Chris Knobloch. It's a mature group that knows how to function in tight games. Look at their metrics, both sides of it. You know, oh goals against, oh they're a, per game, they're a top-10 team. Goals for, they're a top-5 team. They're expected goals for, like – Statistically, they're a bit of a juggernaut, guys. They know how to do this. Now they got to do it in the playoffs. With Ryan Rashog, um, last night, obviously, McDavid had a couple of assists on, on the two goals, including the winner. He's up to 76 on the season. Yeah. Um, only three players in NHL history have had 100 points in a season, I believe. And it's... Assist. Assist, assist. yeah. Gretzky, assist. Gretzky yeah. Lemieux, and Orr. So you're talking yeah. arguably the three greatest players ever. Yeah. And um, how many players have set the goal-scoring pace that Matthews has set? Just trying to kind of figure out historically which one has been more impressive here this year. Well, that's and we were we've discussing that. We've already decided that. Oh, yeah, we, know, we decided boys, Matthews. Listening. Yeah, we made I that decision. We, just, we decided it was Matthews. But, you know, I know, I heard that. You heard it. And, you know, Connor and his teammates, they keep saying the right things. It's, you know, very cliched. But we don't care about this. We don't care about that. Like, I can't, I just find that hard to believe. I find it hard to believe that he isn't going to have an understanding of hockey history and the idea that he's creeping up on 100 assists. He can, he'll probably hit 100 without even caring or thinking about it. Yeah. But, like, the, these are, when you're rewriting record books or adding your name to, you know, a record book that includes Gretzky, Lemieux, and Orr, like, that's got to be something that he's cognizant of, right? And why, why would he not, yeah. and why would his teammates not be like, we got to chase this for him if we have to, yeah. like, get him over 100 assists? Connor McDavid has the ability to chase those kind of unique, funky individual things without sacrificing an ounce of his team's ability to win night in, night out, right? There's no selfishness. But I don't know, like, Strud, you tell me if I'm nuts. You guys, tell me if I'm nuts. I think Connor McDavid has a little bit of, like, yeah, screw it, hold my beer mm -hmm. type of attitude to him. Here's a couple of examples, right? You know, dry saddle challenges him to get 60 goals. Oh, I'm going to be a goal scorer this year. So he goes out and he's the best goal scorer in the world. Right this year. He even said it to us. Yeah, let's see how many assists I can get. Of course he's aware of this. Of course he's going to try and get it. And a smaller example. I remember there were a couple of days where McDavid was working on his one-timer in practice. And I was like, what is happening? Like, this is not a skill that he tries to, you know, he doesn't spend a ton of time on that one. But he was sitting on the, on the power play spot at the circle whipping one-timers. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I asked Dave Tippett about it, and Tipp goes, I think he just wants to see if he can do it. He'll probably get one, and then we won't see it again. And sure as hell, you guys, McDavid, for about 
two games, was firing one-timers like crazy from that spot. Do you remember? Mm. He buried one. Absolutely <laughs> buried one top shelf, and he has not done it since. Yeah, He's got a little bit of like, yeah, let's see if I can do this. Hold my beer to him. Well, hold my beer all the way to 100 assists is going to be one hell of a statement for him. And again, it's I'm not even sure where that would rank. Like you mentioned, all the goals he scored last year when he hit 100 points in the COVID year. Like it's eerily similar to that. This guy just by the end of the year, he's chasing something new. And pretty incredible. They're in Columbus tomorrow. You're down there at Trade Center Friday. We'll see you a lot on Friday. And um, we one appreciate you doing this. Go for ahead. Ryan. Yeah. In your time covering Jason Strudwick with the Edmonton yeah. Oilers, yeah. did you ever see any individual performances during a game where you <laughs> said to yourself, that's as bad as it gets? Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, you know, I, did watch a few, I did watch a few of his fights where he'd get into a scrap and I'm like, well, he knows how to make it look good. I'm not sure how much those punches hurt, but he knows how to make it look good, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think Fraudulent. I ever actually requested him for a post-game interview. Well, now not you many. get him after every single game. Yeah. How about that, Shreddy? You got him back, <laughs> right? Yeah. You played yeah, the long not, game. Not many people. I hung around the dressing room. I'm willing to talk. Nobody wants to talk. Uh, <laughs> no, just no, out no, the we're door. Good, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. we're good, buddy. By the way, guys, how many times has he patted himself on the back for Adam Henrique today? Yes. He called that. A year and a Great half call, ago, Strutty. and then yeah. two months ago said Adam Henrique would be the guy. So he's going to be unbearable from now to the end of the season. That's your guy. That's, people know. You know when you know, guys. Yeah. Is your name <laughs> is your number up in the Raptors, or can he use your number? Is he allowed uh, to use your number if he wants well, to? What, what number is he? 14. Uh, yeah. 14. He's four, nah. I think he's wearing – I think I saw he was maybe wearing 19 or something. He's okay. wearing something okay. different. With yeah. Give him 34 and let him let him cook. Pressure. Give him <laughs> 34 and let him cook. <laughs> <laughs> Too much pressure. Means he'll throw 99 on his back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the Got Your Back podcast. Uh, enjoy it, buddy. We'll do it again soon. Thank you for this. Yeah, thanks for letting us little fellas hang with the big guys today. <laughs> anytime. Anytime. <laughs> Ryan Rashog from beautiful Edmonton, Alberta. Damn right. We it's love great it. Great stuff. We love Edmonton, man. We've always been a fan. We love Alberta. We love Manitoba, Saskatchewan, yeah. everything. BC. What's the capital of What's the capital of Manitoba? Winnipeg, isn't it? It's got to be. Is it? Flan. <laughs> what's the capital of Saskatchewan? Uh, Saskatoon. Yeah, Regina. Oh boy. Yeah, you guys, you do love the West. You're right. <laughs> we love it. We love it. We love it, man. We what's the capital it. of BC? Victoria, Victoria, everyone knows that. What's the capital of uh, Ontario? I have no idea. <laughs> exactly. You're a fraud. You're a fraud. You know, if you people, honestly don't know. What's on. that place up where they do a lot of turf? They build a lot of turf up. The stalls are from there. What is oh, it? Thunder Bay. You're right. Yes, Hunter, it's Thunder yeah, Bay. Thunder Bay. Thunder, Thunder Bay. Bay, the capital city of Ontario. Yes, Thunder Bay, which I think is the home of Chris Pronger as well, or close to it. Are you is guys it? kidding me right now with Thunder Bay as the capital of Ontario? It's Thunder Bay. Right. Everyone knows that. Mississauga. I don't think that that's correct. <laughs> Mississauga. <laughs> I don't think that's correct. Yes, of course. It's Toronto, as we all know. It is Toronto. Oh, but Toronto. You know okay, how many people bad. say Ottawa? They're like, it's Ottawa, obviously. Yeah, they double down. It's, you know, it's the it's the federal capital, the national capital, and the provincial. So there you yeah. go. All right, Strutty, I think we did everything we're supposed to do. We'll come back and wrap things up. We got some updates for the Leaf game tonight. Sounds like they've got an illness running through the through the room. We'll get you an update on that. Tee up the game. We'll do that next. All right, Lee Sabres tonight, and Jake McCabe is out due to illness, so McCabe will not play. I have not seen who is going to replace him. I think it's Laguson. William Laguson comes in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, McCabe is out due to illness, but it looks like David Camp will play. Camp was a game time, I think, due to illness as well. But Camp will play. McCabe is out. Laguson's in. Uh, there's been a lot of activity in the NHL today, and and now like it, it sounds as if Noah Hanovan could be – a Vegas Golden Knight target, and maybe it's like moving in the direction where that's going to become a reality here. Um, they that's just, just insane. How does that you make talk, sense? Like Vegas, how do they make that work? Yeah, you want to talk about like whatever we talk about going all in. It must be damn exciting being a Golden Knights fan, where you're like last year. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like yeah. if there's a quality player out there, and we know it doesn't guarantee success, but it's like yeah, we got a good chance of getting that guy. Yeah, it's it's. That's fun. That's fun for the business, man. That's fun for a fan. Incredible. Yeah. Good spot to live, too. I wonder if he'd even consider resigning. I know not now, but, like, you know, do they, do they find sure a way to keep him? I'm sure he could make him? it work, Struds. It's yeah. like, yeah. 
Vegas, Tampa, Florida. I'm sure right. he could make it work. He's going to have the pick of the litter. Yeah. But yeah. he'll get a taste of Vegas, and he might say, I don't need to leave here. But well, God exactly. knows if they can afford him. Yeah. Well, that's Big it. guy, can skate, score. Like, he's good pretty good D-man. He fits. He, to me, he's a Vegas D-man, that type of player, right? That's his fits the model. Yeah. Well, I mean, there it is. Like, um, yeah, Kevin Weeks just tweeted out. He's saying, I, I'm told the Knights are trading for Hannafin. So, you know, what, wow. what it is, I guess we'll find out. But um, that means he's not going to Tampa, right? There were a lot of reports that Hannafin was going to Tampa. But, yeah, this would suggest Stone's not coming off long-term IR. There, I, I would guess probably a player or two maybe going to Calgary to make the money work. But now you've got Theodore... Petrangelo and Hannafin in your top four. It's pretty good in yeah. Vegas, man. Aiden Hill on net. You're up, Edmonton. We love you, Edmonton. We're rooting for you, Edmonton. <laughs> but Vegas, give it to us once, Strider. You're calling the Leafs to have a great run, right? I, th- I think I, I want to see if they can add another D-man. Okay. All right. Well, Hannafin's off the board, so that's not going to happen. Right. All right, Strutty. It's been good seeing you, buddy. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. We good love time, you, man. boys. It's been an awesome time. Talk to time. you soon. Yes, Thanks, we will. Struts. Jason Strutt, we're crushing it. it as always. Let's see if Strutty can help us on the way out. Do we throw him on the... I don't know if we should... We probably should just do this ourselves. Don't you think, go? So, yeah, Strutty, when I point to you, you just say, we'll chat then. Are you ready for this, Strutty? Okay. You can sure. say that? Okay, here we go. Thanks to everyone behind the scenes for helping out. We appreciate it. Everyone for tuning in today, TV, radio, podcast, web. We appreciate that. We're out of here. Enjoy your evenings. Enjoy the games tonight. We're back tomorrow at... Hazy B won the battle by a landslide. Oh, 4, landslide. 4 p.m. <laughs> we'll chat then. Yes, Strati. Nailed it.